Hi everyone. So we're gearing up for day four, which is the final day of our Energy Gates portion of Immersion Week. And I just wanted to report back to you on what it's been like. First of all, I have to say I'm super impressed with the folks that have been going through the two different tracks, the spine stretch and the swings. On day one, it was a little dicey because even a couple of the more experienced students came up to me and said after the first session on the swings, I hadn't ever really thought about the exercise this way. And then in the afternoon, we started working on the spine stretch. We were doing a two and a half hour block. And by the end of it, you could tell people were just wiped out. I'm really happy to report, though, that on the following days after that, not only were people more energized by the end of the spine stretch piece, but this is an import, really important thing that came out that I want you to think about in your own practice. We're taking relatively simple exercises, and this group has demonstrated an incredible ability to take the relatively simple exercise and then turn it and look at it from multiple points of view without conceptually or sort of intellectually trying to figure out how all the pieces glue together. And often there are a lot of what seem like at first, if you just think about the words or you think about the concepts, seem like there are a lot of paradoxical ideas, a lot of concepts that don't mesh. But as we've learned from doing Qigong all this time, a separate and combine approach this way, this sort of multifaceted viewing of the whole gets you to these gel points that integrate these seemingly contradictory elements. I'll give you an example. In the swings, and the first thing we really worked on and really looked at was just letting go of the joints in the legs. And when you do this the right way, if you take the knee joint or take you know, any of the, the sections of the leg joints, when they release, you release into the ligaments and into the springs. And if you have the right biomechanical alignment, you get a rebound out of those joints that sends a wave back up from the ankle, from the foot, really from the ground, and that can move you. Right? That's so different from pushing and turning side to side. And if you just do that slog of like push, turn, push, turn, push, turn, you never get the freedom and the bounce and the spring that the swing should have. So this idea of how do I align myself and structure myself and then let go so that I can generate a rebound force, that's a really hard concept. And typically, people start in the swings, they think about tissue turning and more rigid alignments. So to go from, to abandon the way that a lot of the experienced people are used to thinking about the swings and working on the swings and take a brand new approach without this sort of judgment of, well, how does this fit with what I used to know? This group was awesome at that. And I encourage you to try to adopt that mindset. Now, that's a really critical thing. The spine stretch has been fascinating too because as we're working deeper and deeper into the spine, we realize that the spine stretch exercise is relatively simple mechanically. And mechanically, you can see the skeleton over my shoulder, right? Mechanically, it's really different from a lot of other exercises designed to stretch muscles or lengthen tissues around the spine. So what's the point? Well, as part of the energy gate set, one of the most important skills we're developing is the dissolving ability. The ability to dissolve stuck energy and stagnant energy and get energy moving more cleanly through your system by releasing these holding points. So what if you apply that mindset of where is dissolving in the spine stretch? All of a sudden, the mechanical piece of it doesn't become that big a deal. You have to figure that out, but it's not the main focus. There's no stretch in the spine stretch. And so you're allowed then, or you, you open up the possibility that there are these other dimensions to it. And I've said this six times probably already in the last five minutes, but this group has been really excellent at diving into a piece, feeling it, experiencing it, and then not getting all sort of in their heads about how it's going to fit with everything else. And that is the best way to learn Qigong. Because as you see more and more with this stuff, these exercises aren't reducible to a single purpose or a single component. They're very multifaceted, have a lot of different purposes depending on the way you look at it. And the more we can hold them as a sphere that we'll examine and explore from multiple angles, 
the more we're going to get out of these exercises. So even if you weren't able to be here at Immersion Week this year, I hope you find your own way to sort of chain together an immersive style practice with whatever you're working on. And my best advice is to adopt this attitude of taking a multidimensional, multifaceted viewpoint and approach to your practice. Thanks.